If you're only here for a list with no explanation, here you go. That's the list. Have a nice day. So if you actually want to know what, how, and why these things are important, keep watching. Oh good, you're still here. Let's begin. The job market has become increasingly more difficult for technology jobs this past year for several reasons. More social push for young people to get tech-based jobs since the demand is higher every year. However, the massive increase in people pursuing tech jobs has surpassed the new tech job opening, so you have to compete with more people for the same jobs. And number two, there have been widespread layoffs this past year, not just at the big tech firms like Facebook, Microsoft, Google, etc. that are on the news, but at a lot of other large and small employers in other sectors like finance, healthcare, hospitality, and more for tech jobs. The shift in landscape is quite the opposite of how it was 10 to 20 years ago, where there were more opportunities and not nearly as many qualified employees. It was much easier since it was less popular to be a programmer or computer science major, and they had no intention of teaching it in the public school system like they do now. The increase in qualified job seekers and decrease in open positions has made this a significantly more challenging landscape for tech job seekers than ever before. The biggest thing you can do to put yourself in the position of a superior candidate is number one, show that there is very little risk to hiring you. Number two, show that your value to them is at least double of what they would be paying you. And number three, that you're ready to perform and start contributing and providing value to the company right out of the gate as soon as you're hired with minimal to no additional training. The more they would have to train you or teach you or wait for you, the more it's costing them money with no return on their investment until you're ready. I'm going to presume that you have the basics on your resume like your technical skills, job experience, education, degrees and certifications, past projects, and things of that nature since they are the basics. Here are 10 things you can add to your resume to supercharge it and stand out from your competition. Cloud service experience. It doesn't matter if it's AWS, GCP, Azure, IBM, whatever. Whatever, just the core fundamentals. This one is easy. Get a free cloud account, watch some beginner's guides, mess around with it, although you should be careful because some things can charge you money if you aren't careful and start activating services and don't turn them off. You don't have to be a master, you just have to understand the basic fundamentals like why it's good, what the most common solutions are, and how to use it efficiently. Again, you don't have to be a master, unless of course it's your specific job role. We do have a video here on this channel to get you started. We're also rolling out some more in the future. Project management fundamentals and the development life cycle, AKA how the business works. Most positions in the tech world benefit from both of these. Some positions benefit from one more than the other, but it's really important to be familiar with the process of how a project starts, how it operates, and what each group or entity is responsible for until it's completed or if it continues operating like a CICD cycle. CICD stands for Continuous Integration Continuous Deployment, like a software package or a mobile app that is constantly upgraded and modified at regular intervals. Just the basic of this will be fine unless it's specifically your job function and if you want to learn more I'm actually going to work on some more beginners guides on this channel in the future always free of course speaking of project management you should be familiar with agile methodologies well both agile and lean as well as scrum or kanban these are popular project management frameworks and many tech jobs use these but not all of them so agile is a popular project management methodology that emphasizes flexibility and adaptability to changing requirements throughout the development process it's focused on continuous delivery of working software with continual feedback and collaboration between the development team and stakeholders. Agile processes are iterative, with each iteration delivering a working product increment that can be reviewed and adjusted as needed. Lean, on the other hand, is a set of principles and philosophy developed by Taichi Ono at Toyota in the mid-1900s that focuses on maximizing value and minimizing waste in any process. It's about continuous improvement with a focus on eliminating anything that does not add value to the end customer. Lean principles are often applied to manufacturing processes, but they can be adapted to any industry industry. Basically, minimalism and making everything you work on something important. You may hear the term Lean Six Sigma with belt colors like in martial arts. These are certifications showing your expertise with the Lean methodologies. Scrum and Kanban are popular frameworks used under the Agile methodology for project management. You can see some examples of a Scrum Sprint here 
and some examples of a Kanban board here, and you do well to familiarize yourself with the basics of these frameworks. Some jobs won't need these directly, especially at smaller companies, but it never hurts to learn even the basics of things like these since they're widely used in technology as well as other sectors. The interesting thing about these project management methodologies is that when hiring managers see this, it looks like you've already been employed in the field and need less training, which is really nice, especially for people new to the technology field. Experience in change management. In every large enterprise, when you want to make significant changes to anything, it will usually need approval. And if you don't need approval, it still needs to be communicated to all the entities involved. And to do that, you need to submit a change management plan. A change management plan has several important parts. Defining the change to be made, assessing the impact the change will make, risks involved and potential challenges, developing a plan to implement the change, communicating the change to all parties involved, actually implementing the change, and lastly, evaluating the change to ascertain its effectiveness and the impact to the business and modify it if it's needed. This is used in many sectors, in many businesses, not just IT or software developments. Things like this will benefit you even if you decide to change careers. Interpersonal skills. This is something so many people ignore and it flat out costs them jobs. If you focus your entire job hunt on trying to answer as many leap code questions as possible or make sure you score as close to perfect on your Network Plus exam, that won't automatically land you a job. If you're qualified and ready to work and during your interview you start trashing political parties and religions or fail to effectively communicate the value you bring to the company with your personal communication skills, you won't make it to the second round. Believe it or not, I have personally interviewed for engineering jobs I absolutely was not qualified for at all and still got the job just because I was passionate, motivated to learn and go above and beyond and I was able to communicate that to the hiring manager. I'm friends with people that aren't technically qualified for their jobs and still making six figures. And by not qualified, I don't mean missing a technical certification or two. I mean people that flat out are less qualified than some of you watching this, making double some of your salaries just because they play the game of office politics and they have great interpersonal skills and charisma. Charisma and people skills are sometimes more important than the actual technical education as absolutely in insane as that sounds. And that's something I think is going to be hard to swallow for a lot of people, and it may take you a while to accept this. You should also include your experience and ability to collaborate with a team, which is important since you're going to be working as part of one, as well as your ability to respect your coworkers' genders, races, and religious beliefs. As weird as this sounds, this shows that you won't be a human resources and PR risk in the future. In addition to those, be sure to build and include public speaking communication skills so that you can communicate to groups, keep their attention and engagement, as well as master the ability to explain technical concepts to non-technical people. I should also make a little note here to include technical writing skills too, there is value in writing technical documentation that is robust enough for the tech leads to get the information they need, while the non-technical management positions also understand the information you're conveying. There are actual positions at companies where people act as translators between developers and managers to just assist communications back and forth and actually get paid really well. It's not a technically challenging job, but it does require a lot of meetings and interpersonal and writing skills. Analytical and problem-solving skills. There is a misconception to entry-level tech jobs that people think they need to always know the correct, perfect solution to answer any problem. The longer you spend in a tech role, the more you realize that nobody has the answers and knows everything, and many people really don't know that much of anything at all. The people that get things done are the ones that know where to find the answer, can find it fast, and can implement it quickly. The hiring managers will also ask you questions in the interview about what challenges you had at previous jobs or problems projects and how you overcame them. So I would recommend having multiple good answers thought out ahead of time for this one. Nine times out of 10, they will ask you something like this. Brian Chesky, the founder of Airbnb in one of his public lectures, discusses the value of having a will figure it out person at startups, someone that doesn't know the solution to the problem the company's having, but will find solutions and find a way to get things done. It may not be perfect, but the ability to go from a problem to multiple proposed solutions and being ready to act on them quickly is a valuable skill to have. So while most people think about Microsoft as in Windows or Office Suite, Microsoft has a staggering amount of other offerings than just those. Some that benefit your resume the most are experience in Microsoft Teams, which is a collaboration and a communication platform, Microsoft Dynamics 365, which are cloud-based applications including CRM, BI, and ERP, and Microsoft SharePoint, which is a platform to share documents, data, knowledge bases, and more. While I personally do not like Microsoft, large enterprise businesses love using Microsoft, and things like this are extra brownie points to set you ahead of your competition. 
CRM software. So CRM, for those of you that are not familiar, stands for Customer Relationship Management. The most popular version of this is Salesforce CRM. However, there's also Microsoft Dynamics 365, Oracle CRM, and much more. It's useful software to be familiar with on your resume, even if you're not extremely proficient. If you need to use it on a regular basis, you will get proficient over time. Next, you should have some kind of programming or scripting proficiency, whether you're in IT and you're using Bash and Linux, or you're looking at data science positions, and it's more important to know your way around a Python library with some SQL and R experience, you should have some kind of understanding and basic knowledge of programming and or scripting if you're looking for a tech job, even if it's in a non-technical management role. And if you're in a non-technical role, there is still value in understanding what your teammates do and what capabilities and limitations they may have in their roles. It's also fun to call out coworkers when they try to BS you, telling you something can't be done when in reality they're just too lazy to do the extra work. And now we come to ATS compliancy, which you're either already doing or you're completely unaware of it. ATS stands for Applicant Tracking Systems, and it's a way of formatting your resume so that software can easily understand and interpret it. You see, before your application goes to the hiring manager, software automatically analyzes and interprets it so that AI can assist the hiring managers and can prioritize the candidates that are better suited for a specific job opening. If two people have the same resume and one is ATS compliant, the ATS compliant candidate will have a better chance of getting the job for two reasons. Number one, the software will value the resume and candidate hire, and number two, the hiring manager will respect the person that took the time to research this, and that person will look more favorable for the job. This is a general broad umbrella for tech careers, and there are more things that can be included for different specialists depending on the subsector of tech. We can go more into depth for cybersec jobs, software development jobs, etc. So let me know if you're interested in videos like that for the future, and if you're interested in some of these topics mentioned here, we will be rolling out some new videos on them coming up. All subs are free, all courses are free, so stay tuned. And have a great day.